This is a presentation of the technical aspects of a transit B partition in two different ways of doing the anteroantero anastomosis. This surgery might be done uh, with the surgeon at the right side of the patient or in the French position between the legs like it's going to be shown in this case. We start by doing the pneumoperitoneum by inserting the needle in the palmer's point and by inserting a 5mm stroker for the 5mm camera. We are very liberal with 5mm strokers because they don't leave visible scars, they don't provoke hernias and it's very rare to have a bleeding from one of them. So we put two additional 5mm strokers uh, in both sides while the surgeon works on the top of the abdomen one below the chiffoid for the liver retractor, an additional five in the lateral uh, left flank of the patient for the assistant. However, we are very economic in large trokers and we put the 12 millimeter stroker inside the umbilicus where it's well hidden and frequently there is a, a little umbilical hernia there that we take the opportunity to correct. The specimen is also retrieved uh, through the umbilicus. Another 12 is put in the lower left flank, an additional five in the lower right flank so that the surgeon can work very comfortably whenever he is working upside or downside in the abdomen. Here we see uh, the liver retractor. Um, uh, it's a five millimeters liver retractor and the surgery working from the two top uh, trokers, both of five millimeters. We always start by removing these fat pads around uh, the gastroesophageal transition because we want to see the gastroesophageal transition very clearly. These little specimens are always retrieved uh, by the 12 millimeter stroker. Now we start to release the greater curvature uh, using a bipolar a sealer and cutter. Uh, in face of bigger vessels, we use a double coagulation. We coagulate first and then in the same spot by the, the side, uh, we coagulate and then cut. With this double ligation, uh, it's very, very rare to have any kind of significant uh, bleeding. occasions the liver retractor may help to retract also the stomach from the spleen so uh, making it a lot easier for the surgeon to separate one from another you see here an active uh, liver retractor that is controlled by the hand of one of the assistants We always look for this posterior uh, artery and vein, the gastric posterior, that it comes from the splenic artery. It's important to seal it and cut it. And find this window to um, release completely the gastric fundus until we see uh, the left arm of the crura. It is important
important to release the peritoneum completely so that the fundus can be completely uh, released and pushed to the right side of the patient so we have to interrupt the, the peritoneum here completely we are starting to see well fat, these fat pads are just in our way and uh, it's a lot simpler to remove them because we can see uh, the esophagastro transition better which is important for us as you will see we will build a cardioplicature before stapling it's time to identify perfectly where is the transition the gastroesophageal transition because uh, we have the intention to protect the, the link fibers of the gastroesophageal sphincter that are in the gastric side so with uh, two three sometimes four uh, not absorbable stitches sutures we identify where is the is the gastroesophageal transition and we see it here uh, we want to maintain this this area that contains this sling fibers and in some way we reconstruct the angle of his additionally it, this this point will be a landmark that uh, will guide us during the stapling uh, we want to keep these sutures uh, so the staple uh, line will end at the side of these sutures this help us to make our sleeves very homogeneous because they always end at a predetermined uh, distance from the gastroesophageal transition here comes another another stitch and we can almost see and lift the sling fibers of the gastroesophageal sphincter and we are putting it together with the esophagus so that we are going to be sure not to staple this this protect us from a reflux but also from uh, leakages by not stapling the angle of his we are a lot safer in both fields of reflux and leakages here comes uh, one more stitch and we are aligning the sling fibers with the esophagus especially for young surgeons that can commit this mistake uh, to uh, staple the gastroesophageal transition especially in young patients where the amount of uh, intra-abdominal esophagus uh, might be big they might have a pretty long um, intra-abdominal esophagus uh, they might be mistaken by where is the transition and staple at the his angle now this is a last stitch I suppose yes sometimes the the sling fibers are practically visible we see uh, the thickness of this this uh, muscles around the cardia well now our prophylactic cardioplicature is ready and we are going to release the bottom of the greater curvature We try to use this double ligation during all this process so that we will not see uh, 
significant amount of blood. It's also nice to release this posterior adherences that might be in our way during the stapling. Physiologist to insert the Fouché tube. It's a, a 32 French Fouché tube. Some might think that this is a very small Fouché tube, but we do not like to go too tight around it. We are inserting now the stapler um, through the 12 millimeters port that is in the umbilicus. Uh, we gotta take care with this first stapling line uh, because we want to keep enough antrum for the anastomosis and we do not want to create a narrow point exactly here so it's very um, interesting to be a little bit far from the fuchsia tube in this first uh, line of stapling now sometimes we exchange the, the the 12 millimeters port to the, that one that is in the lower left flank of the patient because the angle is better and now we are going toward our cardioplicature trying to keep the same distance always and not interrupting the, the previous staple, uh, staple line so we want to obtain a very straightforward stapling line and now we see that our previous sutures at the cardioplicature serve as landmarks for a very homogeneous uh, stapling and the amount of fundus that will be retrieved was therefore previously determined. Here comes the stapler. And it's always interesting to pull down the stapling line because it aligns the stomach with the stapling and we can see very clearly where is the last of our sutures and here is the perfect spot to finish the stapling line. It's visible that all the stomach was stapled so we can cut here uh, safely and put the specimen uh, aside. Now the right and, and left uh, hands of the surgeon are using the, the lower ports so that we can lift and divide the great omentum. After the division we can put both sides of the omentum up so that they won't bother us while we are dealing with a small bowel. Now it's important to lift a bit the, the stomach with the fuchsia tube inside because we're gonna have to deal with it in a moment. Now we are looking for the sacrum and by lifting the sacrum 
uh, normally uh, who does that is the first assistant that is in the left side of the surgeon so the first assistant is finding the ilium just found it and now we go measuring in uh, uh, five to five centimeters and in this case we are going to do the anastomosis 280 centimeters away from the iliosecal valve so we go measuring five by five at the point uh, the the assistants they keep the the bowel in the right position being the proximal uh, part of the bowel in the left side of the patient and the ilium uh, the distal part in the right side of the patient in the left uh, hand side of the surgeon so the bowel is in position now we are creating an opening here in the mesentery this will help later well it's done and then a penrose drain can be put here it's not obligatory but it helps then we can uh, tie it around the small bowel here it's tight now one assistant holds it in position and we enlarge a bit it's interesting to enlarge a bit this hole because later I'm going to put the stapler here so a bigger a bigger hole will make it easier time to do the gastroelium anastomosis Put the Penrose drain aside. The, we ask again the, the anesthesiologist to push down the, the fuchsia tube. The fuchsia tube helps a lot uh, the opening of the stomach and we want to do it uh, a little bit anterior. Yeah, here it's nice and we're starting to create a hole. Without the fuchsia tube, it would be uh, a tough task because the stomach is thick. Uh, but with the fuchsia tube inside, it's very easy. Here we see the fuchsia tube. We want to make a hole large enough for one arm of the stapler. And now we come to this side of the, the small bowel, very close to the Penrose drain because we do not want candy canes here. We can enlarge this hole a bit, yes, like this, and now we can come with the stapler entering through the 12 millimeters trocar in the lower part of the left flank of the patient, and we put sometimes it's easier to put the the smaller part of the stapler and the bowel but in this case we did the opposite it's okay well it's inside and now the fuchsia tube is, is still um, inside the stomach and it's nice to keep it there until this very moment where we ask the anesthesiologist to retrieve it a bit and and then we put the arm of the stapler now it's very important to lift it a bit so that we can uh, get rid of all the fat 
that can be in the middle of the two arms let's lift a bit and then we do the anastomosis uh, a little bit anteriorly not much this is three and 35 millimeters anastomosis and and it's done it's nice to put this gauze here because sometimes there is some liquid coming from the stomach some bile and then it will fall over the gauze I, I like to put this first suture here in the bottom because it will show clearly to us where the anastomosis ends we are using a barbed suture it's a lot easier and this will serve later as the second row uh, because we do this anastomosis in two planes it's it's also not obligatory but it's important to pick up the mucosa of the stomach because otherwise it may retract and uh, this anastomosis might become stenotic so you will see that during the the, the first line of it's important to remove the the pen rows at, at this point and now here we are doing a total line of sutures also with a barbed suture and there's some liquid there so it's better to to aspirate a bit yes and then let's start this row yes here it's better to close this the faster the better because there is liquid inside the stomach and I caught the mucosa of the stomach so it won't escape here in the in the in the side of the bowel uh, it's okay to do just ceramuscular it's just important to pick up the, the gastric mucosa to avoid stenosis at least in some stitches not in all of them so we are closing the defect in two lines of suture one total and here the assistant uses uh, the, the first stitch that I put there to present me the, the defect that I have to close and it makes a lot easier. This is the last of the total. Yeah, now we can restart with the, the first stitch that I left here to do the cerebrospinal uh, line of suture. As we do not intend to do uh, one anastomosis transit by partition, 
uh, we don't care much if this this part will be stenotic or not because this is the afferent loop that will be cut anyway The gastroidium anastomosis is finished. It's time to interrupt the afferent loop. loop. The stapler is input through the umbilicus port, which is a 12 millimeters. And then we go very close to the end of the anastomosis so that the candy cane is zero have zero candy cane is a very nice goal yeah now we have to find the Peterson space this is probably the, the most boring uh, part of this surgery because sometimes it's not easy to present where is the Peterson space and it's easier to close it from the left side of the patient than from the right side here our assistants are beginning to present it yeah uh, but this first bowels the first parts of the small bowel this proximal gut is always trying to pass to the other side that is what, why it's so important to close the Peterson's defect that we now see uh oh not yet we have to present it a little bit better yeah it's okay now we see the V shape of the beginning of the Peterson's Peterson space and we are using a barbed suture although sometimes a locked silk suture here is also interesting whenever you pass the first one all the others become a little bit easier Here we see that the Peterson's defect is completely closed.
Now we are going to select a point uh, 30 to 40 centimeters uh, below the gastrilio anastomosis to make a lateral lateral mechanical anastomosis. Uh, then uh, later we are going to show how we do it in a terminal lateral mode. But here it's going to be lateral lateral. This is a presentation suture. Uh, it facilitates a lot the insertion of the arms of the stapler in both sides of the of the limbs. Observe that it is the, f the assistant entering through the liver retractor port that lifts up the, the bowel so that the, the anastomosis will be a little bit easier. So we create the points for the insertion of the arms of the stapler. The intention is to create a 35 to 40 uh, centimeters uh, anastomosis. This anastomosis is criticized because over time they may enlarge and, and become like a, a pouch. So many people in Brazil uh, start to do this uh, in a terminal lateral mode which is um, a little bit harder. It takes maybe five to ten minutes more than to do this way but um, the final aspect uh, especially later um, seems to be better and maybe by doing it manual uh, to in a terminal lateral mode uh, into susceptions and those little pains that uh, people that have a rooks and why may suffer uh, might not appear if you do it in a terminal lateral mode. So this is a criticism to this type of lateral lateral anastomosis. I also like to put a stitch in the end of the, on the, of the anastomosis before I start it because it will facilitate it in the end. So this is a stay suture that um, will present the end of the anastomosis. Then we use uh, a barbed suture to close this defect and we are about to end the surgery. We're just checking if there is any bleeding. If you staple it very slowly usually there is no bleeding. Here we meet uh, the landmark for the last stitch, so it's interesting to have it at this point. Anastomosis is over now. 
just cut this just and as there is a very little space here a single stitch sometimes enough because it's really a very little space it's very rare to find a hernia in this space I particularly never found one but it's nice to 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 do at least one stitch to uh, approach these two sides now we're just checking our presentation stitch as it was uh, stretch it maybe it's a good idea to to reinforce it before we cut it yes it's a it's good this is an absorbable suture anyway here we see the final aspect we see the cardioplicature it protected the his angle it reconstructed the his angle and also protect the the sling fibers of the lower esophageal sphincter uh, but the stapling line uh, is completely regular the, the sleeve is a, is a tube and you can see it well it's a well proportional tube and you see the gastroiliorenastomosis here see the short way to the common channel the anterior anterior anastomosis and we take the opportunity to uh, close a bit the peritoneum uh, with the coagulator in the only large trocar that we have out of the umbilicus because the umbilical one we are gonna close under direct vision this completely avoids a uh, bleeding and hernias in these spots the others are all fives that are very innocent as i mentioned i am going to show you uh, how we would have done the enter enter anastomosis terminal laterally this is another case where instead of a, a mechanical anastomosis we did it um, manually we divide the mesentery under the staple line um, the the mesentery was open a little bit more than in the lateral lateral case and we completely removed the stapler the stapling line and the idea here is to uh, unify point A to point A and B to B so that we construct a perfect uh, terminal lateral anastomosis we believe that this uh, won't provoke any dilation in the future and uh, the, 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 the occurrences of pain or intussusception is much reduced with this type of anastomosis here we see we opening the what is the alimentary limb and we are reuniting uh, like the nine o'clock to the twelve to the first stitch and after doing that we uh, very much align both anastomoses and then we go just following the script towards uh, the middle of the section of the bowel and just by keeping this you will have a perfect anastomosis and uh, you can use only one one piece of suture and at the end it will look like this we are uh, meeting the very first one now and it's okay it's done this is the aspect 
the final aspect of a manual, a terminal latch or an astomosis. Since we understood the very important role of bile in the ileum in the secretion of distal gut signals, uh, we enhance it very much the common channel. This minimizes or turn, tends to turn into almost zero uh, the malabsorption, what is ideal because we want non-malabsorptive ileal surgeries and uh, we uh, extra stimulate uh, all the distal gut with nutrients and bile uh, very uh, rapidly after the beginning of a meal. Thank you for your attention.